This is Pod Populi, podcast for the people. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. Hi again, everyone. It's Brian Howie. Welcome to the Great Love Debate, the world's number one dating and relationship podcast. Since 2015, I am back here in the very, very fine studios of Pod Populi, podcast for the people. I'm at the one in Boca Raton, Florida. It's very nice here this time of year. If you got some miles saved up, go to Boca Raton, Florida. Um, anyway, I um I remember about eight years ago. I, I don't remember the circumstance. Maybe I got a resume or something, and the name on the resume was like Amber or Brittany or something like that. And I just assumed that person was good looking because of the name, which is insane. You know, no offense to any names out there. I just assumed. And there's no way that should correlate at all. That like, and no offense to a Martha or something like that, but that, that there was a name on it. And you just assume certain names go with attractive people. I don't know why that is. There's also a thing that I was thinking about that certain occupations are more attractive. And I don't think it has anything to do with money. Uh, and I'll get into the ones that I think from male perspective, it's like, oh, wow, she must be hot because of that. And I've always been fascinated by the jobs uh, that women um, are attracted to. So I'm bringing in a pro who has some insight and all that. She has been on this podcast before. She's doing a lot of good work um, for what we eat and how we eat it. She's known as the farm babe, far and wide. Michelle Miller, how are you? Hey, good. How are you doing? That's a thing, right? Women are like, oh, I want a, I want a fireman, I want a cowboy, I want a farmer, yeah. I want a baseball player. I know a girl who married a baseball player because she thought he was going to go pro. He doesn't go pro. He teaches high school baseball <laughs> and coaches high school baseball. He teaches gym. She's just like, I, I don't know. I want, always want to marry a baseball player. Yeah, and the chances of them making it are so slim. Right. So that's why I think I don't think it's about the money. Yeah, not necessarily, but there's definitely some sexiness to something like that. By okay. the way, uh, on the topic of names, yeah. Amber's are usually really pretty. But yeah, wh- guys why? Named, guys named Luke are really hot. <laughs> yeah, I would. Pr- that's a good point. Luke's I, are hot. I would think a Dylan is better looking than a Bob. Yeah, <laughs> or probably, Brian. Probably. You know, I think so. Like, I think that's so bizarre because you're just deeming, and and most of the time the uh, the parents have chosen the child's name before they're even born. It's not like they looked at him and was like, oh, I got a hot daughter she's tiffany every every amber and luke listening right now is so stoked they are i know i think if you have a soap opera name you're just better looking Absolutely. in walks mckay that's a good looking yep. guy's name right yep for sure. if your name mckay i think you're better looking uh, than if you're just joe yeah probably no offense to joe that's yeah. how screwed up we are that's how we project on things i wish i was named mckay yeah yeah anyway um mckay on the controls back there um yeah I'm do missing- fire uh, do firemen farmers there was a show about farmers dating recently, right? I can talk all about it. All right, we'll get into that in a second. What was that show called? <laughs> farmer Wants a Wife, right? Farmer Wants a Wife. And yeah. then um, one of the bachelors, Chris Souls, was a farmer. Like, there's this thing. Do farmers make good money? They can, um, but generally speaking, not too much. I think, you know, you can look at it and say, oh, that farmer made a million dollars last year, but they don't tell you that the input costs were like 1.1 million. You know what I mean? Right. And, you know, I don't want to get into subsidies and dinner, but uh, supposedly if you have land, you have a farm, you have property, you have (laughs) animals, something about that is attractive. I don't know. I mean, like asset rich and cash poor is generally how you can put it, you know, (laughs) like if they sold out, they'd probably, you know, make millions of dollars, but it's all tied up in the farm and and their um, implements, their tractors and stuff. And there's a lot of myths around the subsidy thing, too. Like, I think a lot of people think that they get all these crazy subsidies, but that's really not true. Yeah, I think that if if there's a bad rainy season or there's a drought they just get a check anyway from the government is that not true uh not necessarily no it's um it kind of varies by region but generally speaking it's like uh 
like a cost share program for like their crop insurance. So like they have to carry these massive crop insurance policies if their crop is damaged, but that's really expensive. And then the government might say, well, like we'll pay for part of that. Or they might do like, if they're doing a conservation program, they might say, well, it's $25 an acre to do cover crops, but we're going to give you 15 of that just because it's good for the environment and the planet and stuff. So they're trying to like encourage more environmentalism. See, great love listeners. You come here for the love stuff and we give you farm (laughs) subsidy information. (laughs) You're welcome. You never know what you're going to get here. You're a female. Is it is it something about women on one hand have, you know, preferences on whether they date a white collar guy or blue collar guy or whatever, but almost overwhelmingly they are attracted physically, sexually or whatever to the blue collar guy, to the guy who can get a little dirty, the guy who can work with a tool set, the guy who's not me, um, the guy, <laughs> that guy who can fix shit. Is that something that goes back to he can take care of not just me, but whatever I need? Oh, yes, absolutely. I think it's so sexy. And I think, too, it depends upon how you're raised, maybe. You know, like, I don't know if this is true. What are your thoughts on women are attracted to men like their fathers? Do you think there's truth to that? Because that's p- something people say. I don't know. I, my my dad was an interesting dude. So he had an he was an engineer background. Worked at IBM, which is the traditional uh, dark suit, white shirt, buttoned up as you know, Fortune five hundred company or whatever. But he could also build and fix anything, dude. That's cool. Um, I got neither of those skills from him or whatever. <laughs> but I always have been like, wow. I don't. I'm. I was always like, where did he learn that? Yeah. How did he learn that? I wonder that. Why too. is there something that he knows how to do with? tools he didn't go to you know and it's just the way his brain worked that i think he had to like doing it and doing it i think that probably is an attractive attribute that somebody you know there's something i'm pretty good at figuring shit out Mm -hmm. but i'm not pretty good at um you know waxing a boat (laughs) (laughs) you know calling you next Uh, right right but (laughs) there's something to be said like you see a man who has a uh, a very defined occupation and a very unique skill set and is something like I am going to physically work hard. I yeah. think that's a good thing. If you have a job where you have to get up at early, I think that's attractive in a human being because the laziness isn't going to kick in. Yeah, I think so too. And you know, I think about like the way I was raised, right? If you think about women are attracted to men like their fathers, like my dad is pretty cool. Like my dad can do anything. Like he's a really hard worker. He's retired. He can't sit still. The guy's like 70 years old and he just rode his bike for 17 miles. You know what I mean? Like he's just, he's a beast, like in the best way possible. And I'm like, I need to find a guy that's cool. Like my dad, that's like funny and works hard and is smart and like takes care of me. You know what I mean? So is that what it's about? It's about the getting up and the working hard is ambition. Is ambition ambition the word? sexy, yeah. Yeah, I think it is too. Yeah, like, you know, two of my exes are farmers, right? And uh, yeah, and I'm talking to another farmer now. Apparently (laughs) I have a type. And they're all corn and soybean guys, by the way. Like, what the heck? Um, Oh, so you have a specific type within a type? (laughs) I mean, not that I'm trying to be. So you're not a cattle person. Well, no, I mean, they've raised cattle too. Okay. So yeah, a little bit. They're very talented farmers. (laughs) Corn, soybean, cattle. A guy who can get the milk out of the cow has some attraction. Attractiveness. Beef cattle. You know, a lot of dairy cows are milked by robots nowadays. I'm sure they are. They are. Yeah. So a guy who deals, a cattle guy is both a farmer and a cowboy? Uh, so no, not necessarily. That's just, so like a rancher would be like somebody that has thousands of acres where they're more pasture raised, like a cow calf, like where they're, but beef cattle farmers are more like feedlots where you're finishing them out for market weight. And then you also have cowboys, which are the guys that check on the cows. So, so if you have a ranch... The cowboy's the guy on the horse. A farmer's not a rancher, but a rancher's kind of a farmer. They're both working land. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 there's definitely some differences, but it's, yeah, six and one half dozen. So if you see a guy in a sports car or you see a guy on a $200,000 tractor, you're turned on by the tractor. (laughs) (laughs) The sports car is fine too. You know, I don't know. I guess, yeah. I guess what I'm getting at is, um, I don't think it's about the money. I don't think so. I think it's about the, what we said, the ambition. It's about working hard. I think that is a, a um, attribute that is positive in anything because it means I can count on this person to be motivated by themselves. So they are motivated to get up in the morning, get a job done, do that. I always like that. I always, I always, you know, there's a lot of guys who are very lazy and, 
sort of fall ass backwards into a lot of money, especially in, uh, you know, I was in Hollywood a long, long time. There's a lot of people who are morons and they fail upward and they get money. And if I'm a woman, I almost said girl and everybody gets mad when I say girl. If I'm a girl, <laughs> you're initially attracted to maybe the flash of it or the cash of it or the watch or the yeah. car or the house. But is there a core there? Is there a core work ethic that's going to be like when we are married and we have three kids and we're struggling here that you're going to figure out a way to get it done? Yeah. And I'm not sure a Hollywood agent's doing that. Yeah. And I think the other thing, too, about farming and agriculture is that they're very family oriented people, which is also very sexy. You know what I mean? So it's like they there's not a lot of good looking single farmers out there um, because they all get married when they're 20 and they have like 100 kids, you know, so there's there's it's, oh, they're not single, but they, they're good looking, but married. Well, yeah, there's a lot of good looking like married farmers out there for sure. Yeah. Like I go on farm tours all the time and I'm like, Oh, that's so much. It's so easy to listen to him talk. Well, it's also so easy on the eyes, but just nice guys. So I drive when I drive through America and I see these farms. I'm like, where did these kids go to school? Where, where is because you seem like you're very isolated. Where do you go to? Um, you're not going to Trader Joe's. <laughs> I don't know where you're going to the store. Like, where are you going? You're fairly isolated, so the family unit probably matters. The people that you interact with are the people you're working with on your farm, and the the family. Yeah. Where I was farming, I used to farm in Northeast Iowa. And there's so many small towns that the name of the high school was called MFL Marmac, which was Monona, Farmersburg, Luena, Marquette, and McGregor. It's Everybody like, combined. It's literally like five little farm towns. And yeah, shout out to anybody from... And if you have a farm and it's, so been, it's been you know in your family for generations... You're not just moving. You're not just packing it no. up and like, you know, I think I'd like to live in Hartford. Yeah, there's like, there's stability. There is stability. And you're like, this is what I'm going to do. It's my job to raise the family. I could see how that can be attractive. Yeah, it but is. The problem is the numbers. You're not. There's not a nightclub full of like 50 farmers, <laughs> right? No. Or if you do see a bunch of farmers, they probably worked their ass off all day and they're drinking nine beers at five o'clock. There is some truth to that, too. <laughs> well, but it's funny. You know, my ex, Doug, that I was with for like seven or eight years, we were farmers together. And that's when I started my Farm Babe social media platform. And yeah, I mean, he met me in Florida, right? Like I was his bartender. He was on vacation. It's like, yeah, how do you meet women? Like you, you meet them Right. On how vacation. do you? I mean, you, know, you know, you're fairly isolated. It's like guys who work on a, on a ship. We're in uh, Florida right now. If you look out on the coast here, there's these big freighters. How many people are on those? And how long are they on those? Yeah. Are, are they just sitting out there for months? Is it eight dudes? Is it yeah, 50? Is it, it one? Usually, yeah. And then they come back to the land and they just spend stupid money at the bars. <laughs> now, do farmers have uh, a lot of time off? It depends what they farm and when. Um, if you are not a livestock person, then yeah, you can get away like in the winter, you know. But uh, it depends. The climate matters. What they're, what they're doing matters. I remember, um, so my ex and I, Doug, he... Uh, he actually got rid of his livestock. This is the first year that he hasn't had livestock, which is so weird. Um, he and I are still friends. And I was in Iowa on a business trip, like, I don't know, a month or so ago. And I um popped in and it was so weird to see no animals. But he's like, yeah, but I have a little bit more time. I'm getting close to retirement. Like, I'm like, hmm. So you can do whatever you want now in the winter. Um, But, you know, when he, when we had livestock, though, it was like, also, we were, raising lambs and calves and there is nothing sexier than like a this big rugged strong calloused hand farm boy like handling slaughtering a, delic a delicate calf no not slaughtering <laughs> just like That's like hot. nursing or helping them oh, like when a when a newborn <laughs> When a newborn lamb is like struggling and is sick and yeah. he's like out there at two in the morning with like bottle feeding this lamb that's struggling, you know, it's really sweet. Like we had, we would bring lambs into the house, like by the fireplace to warm them up or like take care of them. And you know what I mean? It's like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of sensitive things. Is you a have vineyard to be as a person a farmer? Is yeah. It? Viticulture. Yeah. Somebody who owns a winery or are they a farmer? Yeah. Like okay. a grape grower? Yeah, they would call them growers. Now, somebody brought this up to me on um, on a podcast I guessed it on. They said that they like men in those occupations. I think they were a, a bourbon maker because they have to have incredible patience for payoff. A bourbon guy might have to wait years to see if the fruits of their labor turned into anything. Same with a winemaker, same with a farmer, that you are not getting immediate um, result of your labor and patience is a very good 
quality to have in a relationship, I think. Yeah. And it depends, again, depends what you're growing, when, where, you know, where you're selling it to. You know, I know I was just out at a vineyard in Washington and they were selling some, they were making their own, so they were able to process it right away, but then they also sell direct. So they would sell off to the distributors, which would then go off to like, you know, like a cupcake wine or, you know, yeah. something like that. So. All right. I got to take a quick break so we can pay for um, wine and things around here. I am here with the farm babe, Michelle Miller. We were talking about what people do and why we like it. And I've got a little interesting point to make when we come back after the break, right after this. <laughs> And we are back. Um, so if somebody, oh, farmers are also, there's science involved. They're very educated. You know, there's a lot of education that goes oh, on. Yeah. You, you learn a lot growing up in it, but you, there is a lot to go. You're, you're a meteorology. There is all kinds of things in there and you have to balance it with instinct and you have to balance it. So, the, you know, we're talking about farm because that's your specialty, but there's something attractive about somebody who has mastered a craft, no matter what that is. Yeah. Um, the the old uh, film critic Roger Ebert once said that one of the most interesting things in a movie that's underrated is to watch something do a job, somebody do a job that you're really not familiar with, like a safe cracker, like a glass blower. Somebody who's like, I don't know how they do that. I've never seen them do it. And it's, you know, they spend six minutes in a movie showing that. And, and you're, we're all fascinated by stuff like that, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, if somebody went and spent a day at a farm, they would have no idea no how idea. this happens. Yeah, it's so cool. I know. I love what I do. I get to share their stories and create the content around where our food comes from. Now, one issue I have where our food comes from, and again, this is related to dating here. I go to a farmer's market or a street fair anywhere in the world, and it is cheap. Farmer's market in America is the most expensive place to buy food. Why is that? <laughs> uh, there's usually a lot more costs involved in like the processing and the shipping and the packaging. And then there's also... Well, yeah, there is when you send it to the store, though. So why is a farmer's... Like, the yeah. farmer's market is because Americans are fooled into thinking fresh means more money? Uh, yeah, I think there's some truth to that, too. But, um, you know, it's like they also have to hold licenses and certifications, and then you have to pay your market fees, and there's a lot more money. And then with your sales and marketing, your social media, your time, your, you know, but you're one business running all of that. Whereas if you're mass producing it and you're selling it to just a wholesaler, it's like a one stop and they're buying everything for like cheap. And that's how they're able to mass feed the world. Well, the reason why I'm a fan of a farmer's market is not just because I'm fat and I like free samples. I think it's a good date thing. <laughs> it is such a great date thing. It's such an underrated date thing. People love farmer's markets yeah. because not only do you see things you're familiar with, it's like, oh, fried donuts um but you're like what is that mm -hmm. and the people who work the farmers markets are really um both passionate and knowledgeable about things you can learn things at a farmer market you can try things at a farmer's market you can learn what kind of stimuli um turns on your partner or or date at a farmer's market it's a really good thing to do yeah like you know i'm from wisconsin so just take me to a cheese stand and i'm set <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Nothing hotter than a girl at a cheese stand. Absolutely. I agree. Sampling and, you know, be a little more generous with the toothpick, uh, farmer's market people. <laughs> I feel like they've cut back on the samples in a lot of things. Inflation. Yeah, like, don't touch that. I'm like, can I try this? No. No. But it's a good uh, date spot. All right. Back to the farmer show that was on TV. Who were the women did the, the, that were supposed to be on the show? Women who always dreamed of being a farmer? Or they were? it was farmer first, like farmer, find me a wife, and then... These women had no knowledge of farm life. Most of them had no knowledge of farm life. And actually, they interviewed me to be one of the daters on that show. Oh, really? Yeah. Actually, the producers reached out to me and they were like, hey, we're looking, we're casting this new show and we're looking to cast tall, good looking single farm boys. Do you know of any? To which I responded, yes, I know all five of them. <laughs> 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 like, is it that bad? I'm like, yeah, it's pretty bad. I'm like, they're farmers. They get married when they're 20. They have 100 kids. And like, that's it. There's like no good looking tall single farmers. And they were like, well, if you refer one to us and they get cast, we'll pay you a referral fee. They, mm -hmm. They're like, we see you have a really big following with farmers. And like, I'm like, yeah, you know, so I posted on my social media and um, I did throw maybe about 20, 30 guys up the ladder to the the producers. Oh, and, well, there you go. Um and uh, and then I pocketed one for myself, who turned out to be a total douchebag. But that's another story. <laughs> and so so then all these guys, um, none of them made it. But I watched the show, and personally, I didn't really find 
the guys attractive, like the farmers, like they weren't really my type, you know, right. like I like more of like the tall, pretty boy kind of thing, you know. But anyway, um, they they interviewed me to be one of the daters. And I How was many like, farmers are pretty boys. Well, like, you know, the tall, broad shoulder Midwest, like, you know, like, OK, I, I got you know, a couple of my exes. They're pretty hot. You know, All kind right. of the, well, the good. The Channing. Well, I mean, Chris Tom Souls, Brady I guess, was a... Chris Souls is really hot. Yeah. yeah. He lived like a half hour away from me. OK. Yeah. Um, I met him a few times, actually. But um, so anyway, what was I saying? So the daters. And I was like, I'm freaking perfect for the show. Like, but no, they didn't pick me because they picked the young. There, there was a pretty, show on dumb, uh, not a, dumb, a while ago on maybe. on TBS, and I know because my friend Marissa was on the show called Was it Outback Jack? I think I remember where it was like it. The Bachelor, but for some rugged Aussie guy who like killed snakes with his bare hands. And I'm like, are the girls just signing up to be on a reality show, or is there some? fetish that like i want that level of ruggedness it's probably a bit of both yeah and that's why like the farmer thing there is i mean is far what's the um what's the dating site is it a real thing oh if, like farmers only.com yeah is that a real thing oh yeah yeah i've got a funny story about that too <laughs> so farmers only.com that's women who really don't know anything about farm life and they're like i am i have this fantasy or it's people who understand the value and the attributes of the farmer, which we talked about earlier, or is it probably a bit of both? I think it's a little bit of both. And I think there's some women out there, myself included, who genuinely would love to meet and marry a farmer. Like I'm still on that mission for my future husband, right? What but, is the life of a farm wife? Oh man. Well, for me, <laughs> you gather the eggs. Me, maybe. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my, uh, when, when I dated the farmers, you know, we were very much a good team, you know, like I'm kind of a night owl. So I would check the calves and the lambs into, you know, midnight, two in the morning. And then, he would pick up the 5 a.m. shift. And so we we're kind of just teams. We farmed together. And then I did farmers markets and sold beef and lamb. Direct. Right. So I think if you're working with yeah, the farmer together. As together, I see that. But if you're just the farmer's wife and he's doing the farm, I think that's incredibly boring. Well, most of the time they're moms. So like they're the farmer's wives because they're taking care of kids. Because there's a lot of, of yeah, farmers. a lot, a lot of it's very family oriented. So yeah, like stay at home moms that take care and raise the kids around the family. Maybe they're homeschooling their kids. Homeschooling is oh, yeah, pretty yeah. common in small because, towns. Because the farms uh, the school's too far yeah yeah or like they they raise the kids on the farm you know so they're homeschooled because they're ranchers also or they're you know harvesters or whatever so yeah um so the farm that's that's what you want the farm wife fantasy with the kids or you just no. want to watch your man rise to the rooster and have at it at 5 a.m. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I just love agriculture. It's just my passion. So for me, I want to marry a farmer because I love the farm life. And that's what I do. And that's who I am. And like, I love animals. I love plants. I love everything about farming is just who I am. And it's such my passion. You love animals, but the purpose of the animals is to meet. It's a cir circle of life, I suppose. Yeah, Survival I mean, the fittest or whatever. People used to ask me that at farmer's markets. They're like, how can you? Well, first of all, I think people think when you eat lamb, they think it's like this adorable little snuggly thing. But lambs are actually about a year old. They look like a grown sheep. Um, and so they're not, we're not like... <laughs> People think you're just slaughtering these little snuggly. It's not. It's not a Disney movie. You know what I mean? Oh. But like they're they're big. But um, um, you know, I love cats and dogs just like I love cattle and sheep. And like they all die, right? So we love the animals, but eventually everything dies, and then some die, and they just come with recipes. Well, people, <laughs> that's I... the only difference. <laughs> I think that's so, like... People, people who are in that business, even people who are in. The horse world, horse racing, they learn very on these are not pets. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we're only 60, 70 years into dogs being allowed into the house. In They were working animals for most of civilization. Mm -hmm. Only sort of during after World War II did people like have dogs as like their real pet and sleep in the bed. Or, these were outside animals. These were these are purpose working animals breeds mm -hmm. that's what they have so you can like animals and you can appreciate i like animals because they taste fantastic yeah me too <laughs> yeah absolutely but you bet your ass i'm gonna respect the shit out of them when i'm like, when i'm taking care of them what's your favorite animal 
the cow. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And and we owe them all the respect in the world for and it's not just meat. You know, we get cosmetics, lotion, soaps, like, hey, son, let's toss around the old pigskin, you know, like footballs. I mean, it's like we it's all animal agriculture. It is. And uh, I think the animal would be happy that I enjoyed them so much. Exactly. All, they the, would. all the way to the leather in your car. So you could not date. Are there any this is probably really um, oxymoron. Have you ever met a vegan farmer? I don't think so. Could you date a vegan farmer? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there are other people just do, do lifestyle stuff. Or are there people that who do it that are like, I know how the sausage gets made, no pun. I'm not eating what I cook. I mean, there probably is something like that. Like, I know what the chicken taste you know i see it all yeah i do see the the slaughter of it and so i'm like i'm out i've seen it all but you know a lot of the negativity around like slaughter videos and stuff are is usually kind of like vegan propaganda type stuff or like it's out outdated or it's from another country or like they paint it to they make it look way worse than it is when you actually tour slaughterhouses which i have i've been to some of the largest some of the smallest you name it i know the process forwards and backwards and it is extremely humane like if there's one thing i wish more people understood it's like in the and it's common sense like from a business perspective you want to take care of that animal you want it to go through a very low stress environment because it makes the best meat like you want mm-hmm. to make a good product like a, a guy who builds a table isn't going to scratch up his table and make it you know like and then try to sell it so you want that low stress that good genetics that like treated very well managed very well because ultimately you can get more money for your steak right so it's it's all common sense as a business to to do the best we can and it's it's a pretty humane process okay so what is your other than the knowledge of it so the knowledge of you know a lot of people wanted to date what they know a lot of people are like, I work in finance. I want to have a f- to finance. Do you feel when you are dating these farmer farmer dudes? I believe is the uh, correct term. <laughs> do you feel that you are either have to prove or getting challenged on your farm cred? As a no, woman? no, not not as the farm babe, no, because everybody's like, oh my god, it's the farm babe. So they know you know your shit. Yeah, I've been doing this almost a decade now. So like, does that matter to them though? Or, or they're just like, like if you sit down, if you're on a date with a farmer and you're the farm babe, are you talking about farm stuff or are you talking about real housewives stuff? (laughs) Mostly farm stuff. And it sounds kind of funny, but like, I think. How hot is that to you? I mean, I love it. I could talk farming all day. It's my passion. I feel like sometimes though guys get a little bit intimidated by that though, right? Like I was randomly out at this bar. And this guy was talking to me and I said, oh, what do you do for a living kind of stuff? And he told me that he was a farmer. And I was like, oh, like I, um, I'm i I'm in social media. I'm an advocate for farmers. He says, oh, OK. And then um, I told him my, my platform and he had never heard of me before. Well, then that night he went home and Googled me. And then the next time I talked to him, you know, he texts me, oh, my God, you're a really big deal. Holy shit. And he was all like nervous. We went on our first date and he was like asking me all these questions. He's like, like he was like starstruck a little bit. You know, is it tough to balance, though, your your credibility as an advocate for the industry with your very open about your farmer fetish? (laughs) Farmer fetish. I don't need to date a farmer. I prefer prefer it, but I don't need to. (laughs) Shoot, my last boyfriend. So it's sort of like you know somebody who's a woman uh, sports reporter. She's told not to date the athletes. (laughs) Well, but a lot of them end up doing it because they got attracted to sports because they got attracted to. Athletics. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, my ex, uh, my most recent ex um, was a was a professional golfer. And so that was fun because but then I, the more I thought about it, I was like, wait a minute, that's agriculture, like golf and grass turf grass. And turf. Yeah, I'm, I'm speaking at the Turf Grass Association in January. So, you know, yeah, a, a greenskeeper is theoretically a farmer. Absolutely. It's all agriculture. And so now I'm like, you know, um, looking deeper into like, can I get more into the sports industry? Like, can I like promote turf grass farming that's neat does a fisherman ha- have the same appeal as a farmer is it sort of the same right yeah maybe but how work in the how ocean is work in the smell? land <laughs> <laughs> well, i don't know i really does the fisherman how good is the farm i was just smell? gonna say like i love the smell of dairies and beef but i don't really like the smell of fish so salmon you're out <laughs> if it smells like trout back out okay so that's <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I think that's the thing. Like a lot of women, like farmer, I don't hear too many who are like, "I want to date the 
commercial fishermen. I, I mean, think that could be the smell. Unless I feel you're in like Alaska. he'd be gone all the time, and I feel like it would like I don't know. I just get visions of seasick, and like I don't know. It's yeah, like, it's weird that that cool, doesn't seem like, to have the same appeal. It's cool, but I don't know. I feel like I'd never see him. Like it's you know, with a farmer, I can be out there in the combine or tractor with him. You know, we can farm together. But with a fisherman, it's like, am I just going to be out on this fishing boat all day? So a date, a farmer, if he tells the girl like, "You want to go for a ride in my tractor?" I'm in. But women, that's oh, hot, right? I love that. I could do that all day. <laughs> and you know what? Nowadays, these tractors and combines are so expensive. You know, nowadays, you I get know. a combine, we, like half a million dollars. Or co- cotton pickers, a million dollars. Ladies, got get you. yourself a cotton. You don't man. need the Bentley. You need to go finding guys at the John Deere. <laughs> you need go to the John, hang out the John Deere dealer and the ones who are dropping uh, half a million dollars on some piece of equipment. That's the, your boy. There was a great meme out there of a bunch of like stripper looking type chicks in these skimpy little dresses. They Maybe. were all Amber they, named Amber. <laughs> they were all hanging off this combine, and it was like they just found out this costs more than a BMW. <laughs> yeah, it's like I think there's a farmer named uh, Dirk. He's probably a hunky piece yeah, of beefcake, right? I but um, they're so expensive. But the good news is that with that expense comes really comfortable buddy seats. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for a so ride. You can ride lady. along. You got a nice little air seat. You got heating and air conditioning, nice and cooling. You know, it's, 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 it All can right. be comfortable uh, to ride in a car. We're gonna let you. We're gonna let you plug your farm bay world in a second. But you have been on this podcast before. I believe that you did play uh, worst date or first date with us. But that was a couple of years ago, and I'm sure you've had a lot of bad dates since then. No offense oh. to anybody. If you've been dating, you've had some bad dates, yeah, or good dates. So give me either your worst date or your best first date. Um, that you have either ever had or had since your last appearance on oh, The Great Love Debate. I've got a good one. All right. So last time I did my best first, this time I'll do my most recent worst, which okay. was, this was literally the most recent date I went on was, um, so I went on two dates with this guy who was originally from Morocco and the dates were good. He was nice. We had a great, great time, but it was, uh, he was too into me too fast. Like it was like two dates and he's like, Oh baby, you know, texting me every morning. Good morning. I can't wait to see you. I said, Hey, I'm leaving and go on like this month long business trip. He's like, I will wait for you, baby. Like I was like, okay, this is a little suspect. Like he's it's like, you've known me for four hours, like chill out. You, you don't know? know your own appeal. Oh my God. I mean, I'd want to marry me after well, four hours also, but <laughs> just kidding. But anyway, so it just seemed like red flag all over it. So, you know, there's these social media groups out there, right, full of single women that like, so I post about this guy on one of the groups. And I was like, hey, I went on a couple dates with this guy. Something seems off. These women came out of the woodwork. So come to find out, he gave me a fake name, a fake age. He told me that he had never been married. There is this one girl in the comment section who like she or she DM'd me his marriage license. This other woman in the comment section was like, he's my ex. And this other girl was like, he's my ex. And they found out that he was cheating on both of them at the same time in the comments and this other girl was like i just broke up with him on friday and i was like i'm talking what to site is this, this where you're able to find facebook these people? dating this was oh, facebook Jesus. dating which normally i feel like is one of the more safe options yeah but um so i found all this out and then i guess and there was probably like a dozen women that were like run right and so yeah he gave was me a fake moroccan? name mm-hmm, and he gave me a fake name and he gave me like a fake moroccan name oh and I mean, it was so bad. <clears throat> and so then um, I guess a couple of the girls went back and told him off. And then he like blocked me. He must have figured out like that I was the one that figured it out. And so, yeah, I, I mean, it was only two dates. I wasn't invested, right? Like all I did was kiss the guy like no big deal. It was nothing. I wasn't I wasn't invested. But so I wasn't like my feelings weren't hurt, but I was like he blocked me on everything. Okay. Well, this guy's bad guy. Bad How, guy. However... For every guy that you guys complain about that they don't text me the next day and they don't and you're like he told me he liked me too much that was a that was a bad thing or Not, because you sense some bullshit I sense bullshit yeah no I love that I do love a nice guy mm-hmm. but he took it to such an extreme level like I like I like a guy that sends a good morning text every day I like a guy that shows interest that's really yeah. kind but he was just like, oh, baby, baby. Like, you know, I, I was just, mm, something seems off about this guy. I had to trust my intuition and I was right. There you go. Uh, all right. Plug your farm babe world. The farm babe. Farm babe empire. The farm babe.com and launching a new pun cast with you, Brian Howie, my new pun cast producer. Yeah, I'm a producer podcast too. Yeah. To, to spread the, uh, 
wisdom of uh, the farm world. Yes, heard it here. The Farm Babe podcast drops oh, November I 7. I get it. <laughs> and um, then I'm also on Farm Babe. So I'm Farm Babe on Facebook and at the Farm Babe on Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube, you name it, at the Farm Babe. But the farmbabe.com is the best place to go. Good job. Proud of you. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, you as, far, as far as us, like, share, follow. Please review this podcast. Your reviews mean a lot in the podcasting ecosystem and in the farm world, probably. Um, our 10th anniversary show, our 10th anniversary Great Love Debate live show is on sale. Uh, go to greatlovedebate.com or at the Boca Black Box Center for the Arts, bocablackbox.com. It's right down the street from where I'm recording this, actually. Our 10th anniversary show. A lot of surprises, a lot of big guests. It's going to be super fun. Uh, shoot us an email, greatlovedebate at gmail.com. If you've got questions, thoughts, or interest in a fisherman, you like that trout smell, <laughs> we'll hook you up. Because as always, at The Great Love Debate, we never stop making love. See you next time. 